Böse kesin The eyes of it. Our journey has been steady from the advent. With crystal clear vision, we started off as a news online portal. We subsequently evolved into a magazine and now on, on your, your radio. radio. We do not only bear the name Media House. We practice with the best ethos of our professional calling, presenting facts with objectivity. We are committed and resolute. We are Harlow Maze. Harlow Maze. We are we the standard bearers. It's Harlow Maze on radio. Dedicated to promotion of legislature, democracy, and good governance. It's hot, interactive, educating, engaging, and entertaining. Hello Maison Radio, Thursdays, 10 a.m. on Armed Forces Radio, 107.7 FM. Hello Maison Radio, Parliament, brought to the people, brought to the people. Good morning to you, listener. Good morning, Abuja. Good morning, Nigerians. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. Today is February 22nd. The year is still in the first quarter. Nigerians every day will be wondering and asking questions. Is there still hope at the end of the tunnel? Because the country is faced with multiple challenges ranging from insecurity. Inflation rate is the order of the day. The high cost of living, food items and essential commodities is becoming a trend almost on a daily basis without price control. So the exchange rates and continuous depreciation of the Naira against the dollar is another issue of concerns which definitely has a negative impact on the society and the Nigerian system. This is the state of the nation. As Nigerians will be wondering and hoping for things to change as soon as possible for them to enjoy the dividends of democracy and good governance. And today we will not be looking at what democracy represents and the system of government that the country is practicing. A group of 60 lawmakers has initiated a move to end the current presidential system and revert to the parliamentary system of government. The group known as the Parliamentary Group introduced a constitution alteration bill on the floor of the House of Representatives on Wednesday, setting in motion which could be a transition to a parliamentary system by the year 2031, which is not too far away. So three constitution alteration bills were presented by Honorable Kingsley Chinda and 60 others during plenary. Joining us in the studio this morning is the lead sponsor of that particular bill, who is also the minority leader of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Kingsley Chinda. Good morning and welcome to our studios. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you. Most definitely, it's a pleasure to have you despite your tight schedule. The introduction of this bill has raising a lot of constructive criticisms on different fora. It has been on the public domain and people will be asking questions. Is this what Nigerians need at this point in time whereby the economy seems to be crumbling, whereby the government is seeking to fix the economy? Will the change of governance improve the standard of the kind of government that we are experiencing today? And we're glad that you are here to accommodate all of these questions. So speak to us on the rationale behind the bill you are sponsoring. Well, uh, firstly, let me say that we were elected to make laws for the good governance of this country. And then it's our duty to look at what we have on ground and see how we can always improve, particularly considering the problems that we face daily. And then you will agree with me that concerning government and governance, one major issue has been the cost of governance. And because of the high cost of governance, several persons have proffered solutions to it, which included uh, yielding their salaries or allowances and trying to collapse ministries, parastatas and agencies of government. These are all attempts at solving this problem. Aside the cost of governance, corruption appears to be in the front burner in Nigeria today. So as parliamentarians, we sat down, looked at some of these problems and then decided to prefer what we feel is a solution. And of course, it's not uh, going to 
start and end with us in parliament nigerians must make contributions to it and then we need to fine-tune it and we felt that the system of government that we run today that's the american presidential system of government, government yeah. appears to be too expensive for our country it appears to be humongous no matter the sacrifices we make are we actually cutting down cost of governance the answer is no Every other day on the floor of parliament, we are setting up new agencies. We are setting up new institutions. And these things will come with their own cost. And so, how do we cut down cost of governance sincerely and truthfully? How do we manage the issues of corruption? You also find out that there is the synergy between arms of government appears to be poor. We don't even understand ourselves. I will give you a, a, just a recent example. The Central Bank of Nigeria talked about moving some departments to Lagos. Very Even true. at the level of parliamentarians, a lot of us, we are not fully informed. We are not aware of these fundamental policies of government. And so what do we do? We looked at the system of government and we said, look, it's difficult to achieve it under the American presidential system of government. We need a Nigerian system considering our problems and then solutions on how to solve these problems and that's why we came up with these bills that for now we think that going back to a parliamentary system of government will help us a lot in solving these questions and the parliamentary system of government we are preferring is not a textbook parliamentary system of government it is not what is obtainable in uk not in china not in france not in canada or other countries that practice parliamentary system of government we're talking about a nigerian brew and grown parliamentary system of government that will solve our problems one if we have the executive coming from the parliament no elections for presidential no election for governorship no election for local government chairmanship i, I bet you if you look at the budget of INEC, a lot would have been saved i've been issue when we have not even started and then you have the prime minister sitting in parliament answering questions on government policies at least once a week you will also not have a prime minister that can sit down in government for one two three or four years without being answerable to the people today we have either yesterday it was Gabashew, today it's in galali speaking on behalf of the president of the country and even when we had covid issues here it was difficult to get our president to talk that kind of situation can never arise in a parliamentary system where you sit with the people and answer to government policies and issues that what it also means is that oversight will be strengthened and again ask us what are the political party ideologies of various parties today it's hardly known even at the highest level a parliamentary system of government will strengthen political party ideology strengthen political party discipline i was embarrassed when some of our colleagues from uh, germany visited us and the simple question they asked how come you can easily move from one political party to the other without stress and i was making explanations upon explanations explanations upon explanations at a point they told me chinda don't worry in fact the more you explain the more we get confused it is as bad as that and these things need to be managed and tackled and we felt that introducing slowly and systematically a parliamentary system that will manage these problems will be better for us we are not saying that it it will not come with its own challenges but the challenges are lesser than what we are facing today okay you have uh, analyzed uh, the rationale behind uh, the move by you and 60 other lawmakers uh, to shift the system of government to what we started with the parliamentary system of government and definitely Nigerians will be asking questions, um, is this the solution? You have been able to a large extent disabuse their minds because it will cut down on the cost of governance and it will also checkmate the executive when the prime minister is seated engaging with the lawmakers. Definitely things will begin to fall in place and the policies would be favorable to the average Nigerians. But is this an indictment? Don't you think this will be an indictment? on the national assembly on the lawmakers if they are failed in the aspect of oversight functions and other engagement i will not shy away from the fact that oversight is weak and then what are the reasons several reasons contribute to why oversight appears not to be very strong even as a parliamentarian i cannot beat my chest and tell you that we are at our best when it comes to oversight yes everybody keeps screaming out there 
the budget of the National Assembly appears to be high. But if you have to go on oversight and you have 15, 20 members of a committee going to Lagos, who takes care of their flight? Who takes care of their accommodation? Uh, how are they going to function? What about the logistics? And I tell you, even at the state level, when I was working there, once a supervising agency compromises, even if it is water, I mean, it is bad enough, it will affect the output. And so, some of these things will be strengthened if we have a parliamentary system. Oversight will be strengthened because day to day, you have the executive with you. And I give you an example. Every week, we discuss the security issues in this country and we observe one minute silence in honor of those that were killed in course of that. Some members even shed tears on the floor when they discuss these issues because they are emotional. These are their brothers and their sisters. If we had a prime minister with us in that parliament, these security issues could not have lasted this long. It is either you resign you can, if you cannot manage it because your colleagues will be on you. They are affected directly. You know, the, the lousiness in performance from the executive arm cannot be tolerated in a parliamentary system. Well, these are the submissions of Right Honorable Kingsley Chinda, who happens to be the sponsor of that bill seeking to push the country from the presidential system of government to a parliamentary system of government. Let me just bring you up to speed with some of the difference and similarities of these two systems of government and why him and his colleagues, other parliamentarians, are pushing for this bill. The difference between a parliamentary and a presidential form of government is that the governance system of parliamentary and presidential forms differ fundamentally in their distribution of powers. There is an issue of power which has to do with where the seat of government is and how power is meant to be shared, what policies will be taken that will trickle down to the ordinary citizen. If we do have what we call a parliamentary system of government, the executive branches of that system of government, it means that the prime minister is answer just like what you said in your submission, is answerable to the lawmakers on a weekly basis or on whenever there is a burning issues of interest like the removal of few subsidy, there would have been an engagement with the parliamentarians and other lawmakers before that policy was taken. So, don't you think that this would be weakening the system of operation? When we say the prime minister is answerable to the lawmakers, don't you think this will make the system of, of operation in terms of political adherence, don't you think it will make effective implementation very, very slow? Well, I, I am aware that one of the criticism against parliamentary system is that it does not enhance separation of powers strictly. Yes, but then what is the result? You find a situation where there will be fusion of powers, no doubt, but then the end result will be more efficiency, better efficiency in the system and better results, faster results when it comes to execution of government policies. What it means is that the people are carried along. Remember that the parliamentarians ordinarily are supposed to be Nigerians as a whole. So I represent the people of Obia Bo Federal Constituency and it is my responsibility to go back and carry them along in these government policies and explain why this has to take place. It's different from a situation where I don't even know. What it means is that the people of Obia Bo are not aware. Nigerians are not aware. What I'm saying is that, yes, there will be fusion of powers. Yes, separation of power will not be absolute. Yet, the end result will be greater efficiency, faster execution of government projects and programs, better understanding of government projects and programs, stronger criticism, and responsive government in all. Today, the National Assembly takes motions, passes resolutions. Those resolutions are to be executed by the executive arm. You send it to them. Sometimes the president might not even be aware of these resolutions and nothing happens. Another example is on issue of security again. Severally, we have asked that security formations should be set up in certain areas in order to check the excesses of militants or incursions or ban bandits within those areas. These things are not followed up. If you have the Prime Minister in Parliament and it is not executed on within the agreed period, either two weeks or three weeks, as the case may be, he will be asked questions upon expiry. And I tell you that government decisions, government policies and programs will be executed faster. 
that is exactly what Nigerians want. Government policies and programs will be executed faster and uh, that is going to affect them in a positive way because uh, government is about the people. If the people you are governing, they are not having a good life. It means the government is not delivering what is expected. So, the program is the Hallow Maze on radio. We are discussing the move by Right Honorable Kinsley Chinda and 60 other lawmakers to move Nigeria away from presidential system of government to a parliamentary system of government. We will be opening up the phone lines and of course we would like you any questions that you think the Honorable would want to respond to. Be constructive with your questions and of course go straight to the point. Once you are connected, just go straight to your point. There's no need for you to begin to lament the challenges the country is facing at this period because everyone knows there is definitely what we are going through in the country so the first number to call and make your contributions or ask your questions concerning the topic of discussion would be 0909752-9699 that is the first studio number it is official 0909752-9699 the second number is 0806 396 that is 0806 396 3643. Do you think the move by Honorable Right Honorable Kinsley Chinta would make things better for the country? Let's have our first caller with the first shot on the program this morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning and welcome to Hello Miss on Armed Forces Radio. Tell us your name and your location. I know. My name is Friday and I'm calling you at Airport Road now. Friday from Airport Road. Yes, I want to commend the honorable member. Uh, my God bless you. You see, in Nigeria now, we know that in anything that is happening, we can bring more suggestion and other things. <laughs> but we know, unfortunately, that sometimes when you see people are make, bringing these things to, for us to see solution of uh, the peace of this country, you see some people, like these members, yes, some of them will not uh, line it to political. Maybe, yeah, they want to, uh, the, to, to remove some power from the president or the, without knowing that the people that are suffering the same are more than even the president because people that are dying every day is the same life. But because of one person interest, they want to kick against it. But we pray that you talk, they said they used to, they said lobby at it. I pray that you lobby and it will escape through. We are oh. looking for solution for this country because so many things is getting out of hand. And we pray that in anything that everybody is doing, we we'll see the good results. So I appreciate you, my, my brother. You be. All right. God bless you too for being part of the program. Keep listening to the show and keep listening to Armed Forces Radio. Well, it's like um. Friday, our first caller is in tune with uh, the Right Honorable Kinsley for this bill, uh, moving Nigeria away from democratic system of government to a parliamentary system of government. The phone lines are still open. You can call us, ask questions, make contributions on 090-9752-9699. The second number is 0806 First number is 090-9752-9699. Second number is 0806 396-3643. Well, Honorable, um, I may wish to ask before my callers uh, get through on the program, we have practiced parliamentary system of government in the past and uh, did not do well, so to speak. What makes you think that there will be a difference in the system of government that you're proposing, that you're pushing for? Because Nigerians, all they want to hear is the price of commodity, affordable infrastructure, power supply, for life to make meaning to them before i come back to you hello good morning yes okay paul simon you have a question for the honorable or you have a contribution to me okay go ahead yeah
Okay. Your submission is well noted. Honorable is uh, of the view that constitutional review would be the solution to the problem, not a change of system of government. It's over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, firstly, let me, the first caller Friday, assure that, look, laws should not be made for individuals. I should not see myself as a member of parliament today. And because of that, I want to make laws that will favor parliamentarians. Every I will not be here tomorrow. Very correct. I might be on the other side of the divide. So whether it will favor the president or not, the interest of the country should be paramount. And that is what is driving our belief. Let me also quickly say that we might not be 100% correct. We are human. But we believe that the position we have taken is the best for our country. And we want to leave a positive mark for this country. That's what is driving us in doing this. Now, the issue of constitution amendment, I agree. The constitution needs to be amended. In fact, that's why we have parliamentarians because we know that society is dynamic and so our laws need to change. Constitution needs to be amended. The introduction of a parliamentary system is part of constitution amendment. It's because we are going into alteration of the constitution right now. That's why we feel that we need to amend the constitution, the areas that has to do with the president and powers of president, the governor and powers of governor, local government council chairman and their powers, to jig it in a way that it will be more effective, more efficient, and the country can benefit more out of it. Nigerian president today is a claim to be almost one of the most powerful presidents in the world because of the powers that the constitution has given to the president. I've given you an example. We can have a president in this country for four years and he decides not to talk to Nigerians. You even recall that once the president didn't even want to come to present the budget himself. He wanted to send somebody to present the budget to the National Assembly. And under our laws, he is right. There was nothing wrong with that, with that legally. But everybody screamed. So these are the things that we think should change. We need an effective and efficient system that will produce better results. Okay, why you admit the fact that the constitutional review is constitutional review is part of uh, the bill you are pushing for? You haven't attended to answer my questions. We have practiced this system of government yes, in the sir. past. Clearly, what makes you think that this time it will clearly make life wh new? where we started? We started with those who experienced it in the past. Those who were in the First Republic, and that's why we had to go to Kanu to see Alaji Aminu Dantata to ask him their experience and why it failed. And we got explanations from him. We were with uh, uh, our father, Baba Bisi Akande, just some days back. And we also had interaction with him. We, we, we are tapping from the knowledge of these persons that have experienced the parliamentary system to understand why it failed. And one of the reasons that we have been given is that while it was novel, they didn't understand it very well. The issues of tribe and balancing and all that came up. And these problems that they have itemized to us, we are considering them in the proposed amendment, like the issues of balancing. Some people are afraid that, look, if this happens, a particular part of, part of the country will always produce the prime minister because of their number. And we say, look, these things will be taken care of. And we have also been advised that it might be difficult to go into it in one swoop. And so we are considering phasing it. Start with the local government, have that experience, look at the problems and the pitfalls, and then correct them as we are going into the states before we come to the national. And that is why we are not asking that we should dovetail into a parliamentary system in the next two or three years. But let us start the process and begin to make consequential amendments. It's not going to be the constitution alone. Several other laws are hinged on the current presidential system. Those laws need to be rejigged. So it's going to take time. But Nigeria should agree that, look, we want to do things are right. We want to change this system of government. This mentality that we have, which started from the military era, we need to drop it. I'm a member of parliament. If I want to come to the studio, I have retinue of security men, long convoy. All that is expense on the government. And when did that start? Because you have that military mentality that, look, I have to say it and it will happen that way by force. You forget that you are elected. It is not what you say, but what the people say. All this can only be corrected if we change this system of government. We can't do much. All right, a lot can be done because parliamentarians are willing to make laws, rigid laws for the interests of good governance. Nigerians will be wondering, well, you, it seems like you have uh, done a lot of consultation and you've getting the note to go ahead. That is why you are sponsoring this bill and pushing for it. What 
exactly or what eventually made this parliamentary system fail in the first place because whatever that is new that you're bringing to nigerians someone who was um, born in in the early 90s wouldn't know that nigeria have tasted what you are pushing for what exactly made this system of government fail and because the country definitely we have a younger generation who are looking forward to become leaders of tomorrow if they want to make reference to the past and how we can forge ahead for the better means of great nations for tomorrow they want to make reference why it failed and why you're proposing for it the second time i've just said that first lack of experience and so the method and the practice was not done properly because we hadn't sufficient experience to the issues of tribe and the struggle for power amongst us the various groups and so the west was on one side the south perhaps the south south and then the north on the other side today we have experienced hardship together as a nation we have gone through it i think yes the issue of tribalism is still there but it's easier to tell a nigerian today that look when hunger strikes it would not differentiate between a northerner and a southerner when insecurity strikes it will not differentiate between pdp and apc and so for the sake of this country and for our own progress there are sacrifices we need to make and one of the sacrifices is to drop this toga of i am a northerner or i am a southerner and look at yourself as a nigerian that way it will be easier and better for all of us we have had our experiences and i don't think that what happened in the first republic can easily happen again else this country would have been divided but no matter how we shake no matter our differences you find out that at the end of the day we still stabilize on the same table because we begin to appreciate the fact that if anything happens we are not going to be spared in any way all right we, we have a call the civil war so these experiences will help us to bond stronger all right we're looking forward to having a bonded and united nation hello good morning good morning yes please go ahead tell us your name and your location my name is adam Adam Moses. Did you say Adams Moses? Aldo Moses. Aldo Moses from Orozu. All right, you have a question or for the uh, honorable, or you have a contribution to make? Yes, this uh, parliamentary government system. I want to know the differences between the parliamentary system and the government system. Because the government system is the presidential system of government. What are the differences and their similarities? Okay. To my best knowledge, there's no difference between it and the presidential uh, system of government because they are all being elected as a form of democracy. Okay. All right. Uh, keep listening. Uh, the Honorable will respond and uh, make clarification to what you want to hear. Clearly, uh, let me perhaps start from the textbook explanation of parliamentary and the presidential system, which a parliamentary system you have both the executive and the legislature okay. coming from the parliament so you elect parliamentarians at the national level you only conduct national assembly election and then what we have proposed is that from the senate the president will ignore that will be a ceremonial president not exercising much powers now the prime minister who will run the day to day will come from the house of representatives and then ministers will also come from the National Assembly. So ministers will be parliamentarians that are serving. That way, the ministers can account concerning their responsibilities to the parliament. Yes, they are appointed by the prime minister, but they are accountable to the parliament. In essence, they are accountable to the people. And then the prime minister sits also in parliament. He is a lawmaker. He is paid as a parliamentarian. And so you only get allowances to run the office of the prime minister. And that way, like I have said, it will cut down cost of governance, it will cut down overhead, it will make accountability easier and more transparent. Issues of autocracy and dictatorship will be reduced because the Prime Minister is a parliamentarian and he has his colleagues there that can talk to him. Also, removal of the Prime Minister, it's not as complex as that of the President. So there's, there's the a level of immunity of, in the presidential system? Not just level, the presidential system is 100% immune. So, the Prime Minister, if he fails to perform, a vote of no confidence. 
will remove him as prime minister and he still remains as a parliamentarian and another person can take the seat I will also give you another example. From this system of government, what it means is that you cannot have a president or a prime minister, as the case may be, who is not healthy or strong enough to perform the functions of that office. On his own, he will tell you that, look, on these grounds, I cannot. Because he knows that he has to be on his feet too far. There are no excuses. It's not a situation where you have a spokesman speaking for you. You will be on the floor of the parliament to account for yourself. And so at any point in time that you cannot perform the functions of your office, you don't need anybody to ask you to step down. Now, the issue of political parties too that I also raised. In a parliamentary system, party loyalty is strengthened, party ideology is strengthened because you're going to run the government based on your party ideology and the other opposition party is also strengthened you have shadow ministers who are there watching in parliament and so you find out that the system is on its toes running it's not a situation where government can afford to sleep there is no sleeping moment for government under this system of government and i think that that is what we need now when we progress and we think we want to relax a little bit we can come back to the pleasure government that we are running today but for now things are taking a different tool we cannot continue to pleasure ourselves in public office all right, we cannot continue to pleasure ourselves in public office. Uh, and we'll go on a short break. When we come back, I will continue with the topic of discussion. A move by Senator Wright, Honorable Kingsley Chinda, and 60 other lawmakers to shift Nigeria, to move Nigeria from the parliamentary, from the present presidential system of government to the old parliamentary system of government. He has given us some of the insight. He has, br he has brought us some of the reasons why the parliamentary system failed in the first place and why the country at this time have no other option than to return to the old system of government. Please stay with us. The program is still Hello Maze. My name is still Daniel Udi. The eyes have it. Our journey has been steady from the advent with crystal clear vision we started off as a news online portal. We subsubsequently evolved into a magazine. And now, on, on your radio, radio, we do not only bear the name Media House. We practice with the best ethos of our professional calling, presenting facts with objectivity. We are committed and resolute. We are Harlow Maze. Harlow Maze. We are we the standard, are the standard bearers. bearers. It's Harlow Maze on radio. Dedicated to promotion of legislature, democracy, and good governance. It's hot, interactive, educating, engaging, and entertaining. Hello Maison Radio, Thursdays, 10 a.m. on Armed Forces Radio, 107.7 FM. Hello Maison Radio, Parliament, brought to the people, brought to the people. Once again, good morning, my listener. Welcome back from that short break. The program is Hello Maze on radio. And uh, this morning, we are looking at um, a very, very critical aspect why there is a need for the country to take shape and return to good governance. And this is um, one aspect that is being taken by the whole, by Right Honorable Kingsley Chinda, who happens to be the sponsor of a bill pushing for a change of governance from presidential to a parliamentary system of government and he has been in the studios he has been giving us insights analyzing some of the weakness and the strength of the bill if eventually the bill is scaled through second and third reading and is being passed into law and we still have him in the studio you can as well still call us and ask him questions you can as well make contributions and tell us the reason why you think this is either welcome or not welcome. Hello, good morning. Okay, Emmy the bike man. Where are you calling us from? Uh, I want to ask uh, let us in that one How many in that Okay, you're asking how many lawmakers will be in, in the red and green chamber? Ah, the network seems to have uh, 
<laughs> ended the second question. But the first one was well noted. He's asking this bill because you say the parliamentary system of government uh, will cut down on the cost of governance and uh, would also address other issues. He's asking Emmy the bike man. How many lawmakers we have presently in the red chamber and the green chamber and how many will come when we eventually get to practice a parliamentary system of government since we are talking about reducing costs and making governance more decent well thank you amy uh, presently we have 109 and 360 lawmakers and uh, what we have done is to open up these discussions and it's work in progress sincerely we we discussed strenuously and argued whether we should introduce a unicameral legislature that is one house and a lot of our members felt that look we might be chewing a lot too much why don't you take it step by step allow the unicameral legislature but have a parliamentary system so we are not touching the number as it stands now but we hope and pray that in the near future when Nigeria begins to get used to this system, if we succeed with it, that there will be need to have a unicameral legislature because truly that is our ultimate target. But for now, we are leaving the bicameral legislature, hoping that future parliamentarians might see the need why we should have a unicameral legislature. Okay. We, you have identified your submissions. You identified religion and then uh, different bias as some of the reasons why the parliamentary system failed in the first place religion and um, divergent uh, beliefs and um, now that you're pushing there are some alteration in the bill that you are trying to make amends and recommendations what do you think will be some of those inputs that will make it succeed this time because if the parliamentary system of government the country practice before failed and you have identified the weakness what are those things those alterations in the bill that will make it stronger and better to serve the interests of nigeria let's take this call before you respond to that question hello good morning, good morning sir. yes welcome to the program yeah this is pastor francis from Spain. okay pastor francis you have a question go ahead well, the, the program is Thank you. But, uh, to me, I'm suggesting that let it be amended the constitution. Because the, the president now has been elected under the platform of presidential system of government. So we should allow him when he step down or we are about to step down, then we bring out this very issue. Because it may maybe in one way or the other okay okay yeah let me quickly pastor francis thank you for your suggestion that was actually considered and that's why we have a commencement date in fact we are looking at 2031 as the full commencement date and within this period we would have gradually also done consequential amendments just the question that you have raised on those issues that bedeviled the system during the first republic we would have done the consequential amendment to our laws one of the major major issue was that of balancing of the system which led to military fiat of creation of more states and then the creation of more states did it actually consider balancing the answer is also no because under the military government the head of state or whoever is in charge will just look at you oh, francis is my friend you want a state okay francis state given without considering the issues of geographical affinity tribe and all that and understanding and so we need to reject some of our laws that are presently in place to consider this balancing and ensure that whilst you will not be perfect but that you have reduced some of this friction to a manageable minimum before the commencement of 2031 and if the country feels it, that it is necessary to shift it further. But let us start the discussion. The country is free to do so. We are not forcing anything down the throat of Nigerians. We are doing our work as parliamentarians. We are coming up with these suggestions that the laws should be amended to reflect these realities. So it is for Nigerians to have public discourse on it. Of course, there will be public hearing. We have people who make their input. Organizations will make their input. And then we collate the 
input that have been made and begin to make consequential amendments to laws if it is necessary. If the country also says no, we are satisfied with the current system. We are just an individual, citizens in this country, who we'll continue to converse, who we'll continue to campaign, contribute to our quota to betterment of our country. But of course, majority will carry the day while my minority will have their say, just like we are doing now. Okay. Well, we're still accommodating calls, uh, ask questions, uh, and hello, good morning. Hello, sir. This is, uh, this is the back man calling back again. Uh, like I said, uh, so it's still a uh, work in progress. Yes. Also, I asked, uh, and like I said, you mentioned the cost of Corona. I asked how many, but you said uh, it is a work in progress, which uh, today is a very far. I think, you uh, know, you know that we just kind of seen uh, a lot of opposition who will come into Boston. Uh, for calling back and pouring out your heart. And definitely, you represent a large number of the country. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, let me just add that Amy to represents me. He was actually <laughs> speaking my heart. And to reassure him that the issues of illegal refineries we already have a bill in place okay. uh, to legalize and provide, sanitize, and improve on some of those actions because we believe that that is knowledge, local knowledge on the part of Nigerians. All we need to do is to harness the knowledge and then encourage them to do it in a way that it will be more friendly to the environment. Incidentally, I am from the Niger Delta and so I am affected heavily by the issues of illegal refining and so the bill is also in the before department. the house okay. as, as we speak. While the bill is in the house uh, waiting for either reading or assent, we are also looking at some of those issues which were the weakness of the parliamentary system of government in the first place. And um, to think that we are ready, you say there is a take-off date of 2030 or 2031. And uh, what is the level of um, acceptance you are getting from your colleagues, other lawmakers from the opposing side because we do have a ruling party and we are having an opposing party. Looking at the numbers in both chambers, green and red chambers, what is the level of support you are getting that will make you think Nigeria is ready for a change of system of government? Before you respond, hello, good morning. Good morning. Yes, welcome to the show. Can this add on a second? Okay, I'll do Moses. Welcome back. Thank you. I will the prospect of the intended presidential or parliamentary, I think it is the high time that uh, Nigerians should uh, have a law to restrain all this government concerning this management of public funds. Okay. There should be a law that if they cannot account for any money, the money should be taken from their own personal account. By that, I think they will be very careful in tampering with public funds. All right. 
Okay, thank you very much, Aldi Moses. You're trying to be the EFC chairman of the show today. <laughs> so, sir, I asked a question and you may wish to respond. The level of support and cooperation you're getting yes, from the uh, opposition. Yes. Uh, first, let me clear the impression. This bill, it's not a political party bill. So there's no uh, political no, undertone? at all, at all. It's all not right. a political party bill. And uh, that's why I was a little bit uncomfortable when you started by introducing me as the minority leader. <laughs> it has nothing to do with No, for today you are speaking in the capacity of, of the sponsor of this bill, exactly, not speaking as exactly. the minority so we leader. we have members co-sponsors from APC and in fact labor all the political parties in the house from the north and from the south. So it has nothing to do with tribe nor party. And then the support for the bill is growing by the day. But it behoves us to lobby our members because you don't expect a member who uh, it's not part of it have been issue, perhaps has not done sufficient and in-depth research and does not know what is propelling you to uh, just queue up. So you need to converse for their support, which we are doing. Not just members, including Nigerians. The law is for Nigerians. So Nigerians must understand the purpose of this law before they can key into it. And we have a lot of lobby to do. Also understand that change is one thing that people do not embrace easily. People appear to be comfortable wherever they are seated and they are used to. And so it's going to be a difficult thing. But we are not frightened by the uphill tax. That's why we are parliamentarians. That's our duty. That's why we are elected. So we we'll do everything within our capacities to lobby our colleagues, including the senators, and also lobby Nigerians to rally around this bill and then let us begin to do things differently. Well, that is a call, that is a patriotic call from my guest who happens to be Right Honorable Kinsley Chinda. He is a sponsor of that bill. And um, before he goes, because he's having other engagements, uh, he will be still willing to take one more call. So if you are that lucky caller who wants to ask him question concerning this move to move Nigeria, you might still call and uh, ask him that question before he leaves. We are just less than 10 minutes away to end the show and we have been discussing the move by Right Honorable Kinsley Chinda to move Nigeria away from presidential system of government to a parliamentary system of government. Hopefully if these pass first and second reading and is being assented to, this definitely will be an achievement for him and his colleagues and for the country at large. Hello, good morning. Yes, welcome. Please, can you speak up? Yes, um, I'm Paul. Uh, Paul from uh, where? Uh, is, uh, uh, what I want to add is that with the parliamentary law, uh, with the law uh, uh, coherent than the, than the uh, political party, that's what you, in charity, that is transparency is what we are looking for. Right. What Nigeria is looking for, not... Okay. All right. Well, well noted, Paul. Your your question is very very clear and short, sir. I will quickly respond that, in fact, those are some of the motivating factors why we are proposing this system because it will be more transparent, it will be more people oriented, it will be more result oriented, it will be more pragmatic. That is looking at problems and solving the problems. Less of theoretical, less of plenty of talk action without movement, it will be a solution to solving a lot of the problems that we have in Nigeria today. All right. Thank you very much. My guest has been Right Honorable Kinsley Chinda. He is a sponsor of that bill and uh, he has been very, very engaging. He has been very, very elaborate with his submissions and he has given us all the insight. Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully, we'll bring you some other time. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for the opportunity. The program is still Hello Miss on radio and if you have enjoyed the program, please let us know and reach at the producer on his social media handle, which you have been listening to on the several editions of the program. My name is Daniel Odi, your host. Do join us next week, Thursday, for another engaging and entertaining edition of the program Hello Maze on radio. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. Those against the name, the eyes of it. Our journey has been steady from the advent. 
with crystal clear vision. We started off as a news online portal. We subsequently evolved into a magazine. And now, on, on your, your radio, radio, we do not only bear the name Media House. We practice with the best ethos of our professional calling, presenting facts with objectivity. We are committed and resolute. We are Harlow May. Harlow May. We are we the are standard, standard bearers. bearers. It's Harlow Maze on radio, dedicated to promotion of legislature, democracy, and good governance. It's hot, interactive, educating, engaging, and entertaining. Harlow Maze on radio, Thursdays, 10 a.m. on Armed Forces Radio, 107.7 FM. Harlow Maze on radio, Parliament, brought to the people, brought to the people, 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 people. 